let's break it down, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to go hard. First in real life podcast, so let's get the show on the road. You think about traders, right? Everyone wants to be a trader. Why? Because they think it's so easy. It's just me and the computer and the numbers in my head, right? But you can't do that. Like you might get lucky once, twice, three times. It's going to wear out. People want uphill results with downhill habits. Early We're in a third, world where everybody early, wants to do it by themselves exactly. because this the, the raps normal. tell them, hey, I did exactly. it by myself from the ground up, right? Exactly. I'm, I'm the, the news tells them, I'm Let me tell you something, motherfuckers. <laughs> self-made doesn't do that exist. Shit. People got to get back to work. Yeah, distribution You're not to gonna, the wrong hands. Dude, you ain't going to make, dude, this idea of everybody trading on Robinhood and getting their own MetaMask and buying 400, dude, it's not real. Highly advise people to be careful uh, the type of money that they go after. Mm -hmm. There's multiple avenues that you can get rich, but if you want to get rich quick, um, it often comes with a price tag. You're gonna even go and comment on the news tweet and be like, fuck this shit, fuck cars, car swabs, and uh, the world economic. They're trying to shut us off. Figure out how you can win. Welcome back, my G. Good Welcome to see you, brother. Time. Good to see you too, bro. It's been a while. Same, Nate. What's going on, bro? Nice hey, to meet you. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to be here in the studio with uh with the cool cats. Last time we did this, it was just Luke. Now we got Two Belmars. Our channel is a lot bigger than what it was, obviously. Phenomenal channel, by the way. You guys been doing some great stuff, obviously, Capital Club, all over the world, pretty much. So we'll, we'll dive into that. But it should be a good episode. First things first, I did promise Peter. Shout out to Peter letting us host this space. Shout out, Peter. Peter Bureau, thank you guys so much for allowing us to use this space. First in real life podcast. So this is pretty exciting. I'm excited. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's get this, uh, let's get the show on the road. Uh, first question. Last episode, obviously, we talked about you know, your story. So we don't got to go into that. I think you guys have already done a good amount of that, mm. put it all over the place. So Absolutely. I think, uh, I want to start it off with a conquest, right? Mm. I think you've guys been on a conquest for the last five months, especially sure. you, bro. And I think men, right, are on a conquest as well in life. So my first thing is this, how does your conquest obviously affect a lot of the people that are following you? Mm. And how does a woman, fit into that because I know you're in a relationship mm. and I know what you do is very different than a lot of other men as well. Sure. Right. And we don't see that a lot. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So, so the first thing to like define conquest, it's, uh, it's this idea of we're not out here to conquer the world right here to conquer self. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's this idea of the persistent pursuit of your fullest potential. Let me say it again, the persistent pursuit of your fullest potential, the idea of waking up every single morning and conquering yourself, mm is so powerful and it's so challenging because it requires discipline, it requires consistency, and it requires patience. And in life, a lot of people want the results, but they're not willing to conquer their current level or their current situation, their current demons or their current uh, difficulties or their addictions in order to get to the next level. So as I sat as an entrepreneur, I was like, dude, the problem isn't money. Everybody's like, oh, you gotta, you gotta get rich. No, no, no. You got to get educated. You got to conquer your demons. You got to conquer your problems. You got to conquer your difficulties. And the reason I, I, I came to this conclusion was, you know, we talked about the bull run and I was able to do well, but then I was left with all the problems that money couldn't solve. And those are the problems that are actually real. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's a common misconception. You know, you've, you've, you've done really well yourself in crypto that you end up being in a situation or in, in a scenario where, they tell you that money's going to solve all these things. And when the check actually hits the bank, you feel the same way. And you're left with this void because it's truly a void. And many people are left confused. And we are right now in the process of conquering ourselves to achieve the fullest potential. And our objective is to inspire people, not with our words, but with our lives. And I think a lot of people do a lot of talking and they don't back it up with their actions. And the conquest is to uh, develop 1 million entrepreneurs around the world to uh, focus on creating, multiplying, and preserving wealth. And by wealth definition, wealth isn't money. Wealth is abundance, mm -hmm. right? And the abundance, we, we classified into four different pillars, health, right? Mental and physical, wealth, financial, uh, love, relational, businesses, business partners, your intimacy, whatever it may be, and happiness, this idea of being able to wake up and find purpose. And as we kind of develop those four quadrants, that is what true wealth means to us. And you saw it as well in the bull run, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of people know how to create wealth, 
drop shipping stores, social yep. media marketing agencies, uh, design agencies. Some people know how to multiply wealth. They see opportunity, but very few people know how to preserve wealth. How do you develop a lifestyle where you're consistently preserving the, the, the wins that you've made in life and you're not giving back, right? You know, you go to the gym six months, you go to the gym eight months, but then you don't go for a year. You know, you can't build a lifestyle of success if you're always cheating, you know? And if you cheat one day, you're a cheater. And, you know, I say as a hypocrite, you know, and we, we, we have this idea of people being perfect, but don't look at the messenger, look at the message. And the message stands true, which is you need to develop yourself. You need to focus on yourself. And then the money will come. The relationships will come. The network will come. But you need to be able to train. You need to be able to focus. You need to be able to spend time with yourself fighting those demons, fighting those uh, challenges. And ultimately, that's when, what's going to lead you to a life of purpose and success. And Nate talks about it really well. He says that your day is divided into two sectors, and it's how to conquer your day. We talk about the conquest. You need, you need to be able to conquer every single day. Mm -hmm. Can you explain this idea of like the cycles, how you break down both days? And uh, you were talking about it with, uh, with somebody on Instagram Live. Can you go into that? Um, before I go into that, let's tap into what conquest is, right? Yep. It's conquest of the mind. We have to understand at a macro level that the mind is programmable. Either you program it or somebody's going to program it for you. Yeah. Correct? Now let's go into the cycles of the day. Most people don't understand that it's not insomnia. It's life is cycles, right? You start at night, you go to sleep, you wake up in the morning. It rinses and repeats. It rinses and repeats. And I have a lot of people are like, hey, Nate, how can I optimize my morning? How can I like be fully optimized? I'm like, no, the issue is you don't understand cycles, right? Because if you were to conquer or set certain parameters at night, those parameters are what are going to set you up for success the next morning. Mm -hmm. So understanding that life is a cycle and understanding that your mind is programmable and understanding that if you don't program your mind, somebody will program it for you. It kind of gives you a macro perspective of how the game is played. Yeah, yeah. So this idea of like, you know, people want to, let's say it's, su it's Sunday night and they're like, well, I'm going to crush Monday morning. But yeah. they, all of the habits on Sunday night are setting them up for failure for Monday. Monday morning. So how yeah. can you conquer the week? Rest day. It, how can you conquer the week if you've already sabotaged yourself on Sunday? Mm -hmm. How can you be eating at two in the fucking morning, right? And be like, well, I'm going to wake up and go to the gym. Right. But you already right. failed right before, right? So you're setting yourself up for failure. So it's this idea of the persistent pursuit of your potential conquest 24-7, understanding how the mind works. And like Nate said, if you're not the one educating yourself, programming yourself, somebody out there is going to do it for you. And that's the difference between a king and a slave. Yeah. Nate, let me ask you this. So you've been obviously, you know, when we talk about the four pillars, one of them is health, right? Yeah. And I think you've maximized that to its full potential coming from where you were physically, mentally, I don't know what the time period was, eight months ago, maybe, right? About, I could be wrong correct. there. So me personally, when I look at health, I think it's one of the hardest things and the most slept on thing that people don't appreciate, right? Mm -hmm. Because everybody has it. So they look at it as something cheap. Oh, I'm just going to wake up. I'm going to feel fine again. Mm. Oh, I can eat this. I'm going to be fine tomorrow. Mm. Right? But I think conquering the mind starts with conquering your habits. Mm. Obviously, you went from very shitty habits in a shitty situation to really good habits in a great situation. Right? Correct. So what was the turning point? Or what did you notice about the voice inside you? Right? How did that sound when you were in a bad state? And how did that change? To where you are now. I mean, first off, we have to understand what the brain is. Yeah. Right? Like the brain feeds us information, feeds us lies, feeds us truth, feeds us biases. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can get stuck in the echo chamber. So understanding that if one is not operating with a healthy brain, the chances of you getting out of the rut are very slim, if none. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand what is the purpose of the brain? How do I take care of the brain? And if I take care of my brain, I'll be able to operate at a higher level. Because me trying to change my lifestyle with a brain that is not functioning, with a brain that is not operating at its full capacity, a brain that is being attacked 24-7. It's counterintuitive. Yeah. It's counterintuitive. I, and how do you attack the brain? How does the body function? You have food, and then you have two other things that are more important than food. 
water, and air. Those three things, 24-7, especially if you're in a city, are being attacked. You're being attacked. Yeah. So it's understanding how you're being attacked. So if somebody's shooting arrows at you, what are you going to do? You're going to stand there and be like, I got this. I'm a G. No, you're going to put up the shield and you're going to move forward. Mm. So it's understanding that the brain is basically a, a machine. It's a computer. You can program it and you have to take care of it. Yeah. And if you take care of it, it'll take care of you. Yeah. And if you take care of your mind, that's where everything starts. Uh, Descartes or Descartes, like the like the, uh, like the the French say, I say Descartes because uh, I come from a Hispanic country. He says, I think, therefore I am. So yeah. if you focus on how you're thinking, how you're processing information, then you can become whatever you want. And especially for all the crypto heads, all the Web3 nerds, and I'm one of them, mm -hmm. like people are sipping Mountain Dew 24-7 yep. in the den. Dude, that's not optimized. In the last 12 months, I took about 12 or 13 trades in the crypto market. I just took an account from 5K to 100K in the last seven months with like 11 trades. I think the I think I was like nine out of 11 and uh, they were all winners. And it was because I'd positioned my mind in such a way where I'm not out here hustling. I'm positioning my mind, I'm training myself, I'm developing, and then I'm taking action. People think that doing equals success yes, or that or doing, progress exactly and it, it's, it's super counterintuitive, counterintuitive. Yeah. when you look at rich people dude they'll pick up send two two text messages not do anything send three text messages do a deal flow here and there and why are they so far ahead because they know something that you don't that it's it's not about hard work it's about how you position your mind how you think and how you operate why is jamie diamond right the ceo of of jp morgan, JP morgan. why is he at the age of 27 doing 100 million dollar deals at warren buffett with warren buffett and there's other 27 year olds that are working at McDonald's. Like, what is the difference? Yeah. There is a massive difference and it's right here. Could it, that's perfect segue into arbitraging information, mm -hmm. right? So we talk about arbitraging information. I think a lot of people don't understand what that means and how do you change information that is being fed to you 24 seven, right? YouTube, Instagram, Google, Facebook, me personally over the last two months, I think I've gotten my screen time on social media from like six hours a day. I I've, used to seen, give I've my, seen you disappear a little I, bit. Yeah. And, and here's the thing, right? I used to give myself the excuse of like, I'm on social media to work, to keep up with Correct. news. But I changed this one habit and it's every time I open up my Instagram, I tell myself dopamine, 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 mm -hmm. right? So it's like, I'm striking my head. It was like, do you really want this dopamine or do you want to mm -hmm. put it away, right? So there's a big, like, what's the word I want to use? There's just lack of information of, people not knowing where to start, right? It's like, how do you rewire your brain? Because somebody like you, you're reading, you're getting access to information that the average person, right, doesn't see. Don't know where to look either. So how does that first step start? I think the first step is in becoming humble and realizing that you don't know shit, mm. right? Because yeah. when you're humble and you sit down and you're like, the, why, is so, why are all these people so far ahead th than I am? in my same age bracket and why am I stuck? And it yep. has to do with, first of all, understanding that you don't know anything. Like yeah. you truly don't know anything. So you come with a student's mentality. Yeah. I see people, you know, and I see it not just with myself, but with other influencers. I see it when people comment on YouTube, their first reaction is to, is to uh, shit on people or is to uh, hey. be like, oh, this was lucky. Well, what if it wasn't lucky? Mm -hmm. What if you're wrong with that comment? Yeah. What if that person was prepared? And it's this idea that so many times in life, you look at a situation and you try to view it through your lens, but maybe the solution is that you have to educate yourself in a way that other people don't educate themselves. And I said this, uh, I say this often is, do you think that the kings or the monarchs or the emperors got, got the same education that the peasants got? Mm -hmm. Do you think that they ate the same food that the peasants ate? Do you think they hung out in the same circles that the peasants hung out? No, they didn't. So the first step is understanding that the education that you're being fed, right, is going to lead you to an end result. So you have to ask yourself, who's feeding me this information and what is their intent? Mm. The second thing is, who's feeding me food and what is their intent? And the third one is, what circles am I being placed in or am I putting myself in? And what is the intent of the people around me? Because if you can understand the intent of why people are doing what they're doing to you or to themselves or to the environment, you can determine whether you want that for your life or not. That's the first part. The second step is you need to look at the data. If, if there's an issue with diabetes, for example, in America being one of the leading causes of death, 
The question has to be, well, why, why is that taking place, right? If there's so many people addicted to porn, you need to ask yourself, well, why is that the case? If, there, if people are getting smashed all day, uh, getting drunk all day, being high all day, you have to ask yourself, well, what's the source? What's the reason? What are they thinking and what is being fed to them? And you want to stay away from that. Mm-hmm. Food-wise, mental-wise, and then the people around you. Dude, you know it just as much as I do. The, most people are like, oh, you know what, bro? I have shitty friends, but they're still my friends, you know? Yeah. Dude, you have to live with yourself for the rest of your life. You have to live with yourself for the rest of your life. You don't have to live with your girl for the rest of your life. You're not going to live with your boys for the rest of your life. So the decisions that you make, you have to be accountable to yourself in the fucking mirror every single day. Because when you're on your deathbed, you can't be out here blaming nobody. It's just you. It's your decisions. And what I realized is that the foundation to everything, success, wealth, everything is health. Why? Because I can have, let's say, my parents. People talk about family. But if I don't have my my health, I can't enjoy my family. But I could do without my family and still have everything else. Mm. But if I don't have my health as a base, can't do anything. it's useless. I could have all the money in the world, but if I don't have my, my base set and, 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 and established, then I lose. I could have a phenomenal relationship with my, my girl, right? But if I don't have health as a foundation, there's nothing to build on. And it's this idea that if you're dead or if you're not operating, like Nate said, Nate said your, your, your CPU is not operating at its full capacity, you're losing. And people need to focus on that. And I say, as I've said it before, it's this idea that when I, t- I, I go and ask these billionaires for advice in Puerto Rico, or I sit down with people worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, people that have sold companies, ask them, dude, give me some advice. Focus on your health. Focus on your health. Well, what about money? Shut the fuck up. Focus on health. And then you start realizing that the needs and the wants that the, the common people have or the people that are un, 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 uneducated is not the same wants and needs that people that have already made it have. So you ask yourself, maybe I just avoid all the bullshit and I go straight to the end goal by surrounding myself with winners, taking the advice of winners, which is focus on your health, focus on your development, focus on yourself, and then the rest will come. What do you think, Dan? What I think is the first thing that you're talking about is you said kings had different education. What is education? It's information. It's just they choose what information to give you, mm-hmm. and then they give other people other information. But Ma, I want to challenge something you said. You said that we lack information. Yeah. I highly disagree. I think we have an oversaturation of information, especially since we're hyper-connected mm-hmm. with this internet bro like this has only been around a couple of years g yeah, yeah like we as humans are trying to adapt to what this world has brought us to in 2022 yeah. so the issue is there is good information and there's a lot of erroneous information mm-hmm. there's a lot of people out there with them with with their either agendas or opinions but basically everybody has a voice so when you have a voice you have information yeah. so you have to learn how to like luke said What's their intention? Who's saying it? Dude, I, I know so many people. So many people that just leak fake information on the internet. Mm-hmm. And other people, credible people, like news outlets, sign on it. Pick it up. We'll literally pick up the stories, yeah. dude. Pick it up without even verifying. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens 24-7. So even this idea we were talking about, what were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about, I was talking with Jonathan. We were talking about like Nikola Tesla. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what do you know about Nikola Tesla? And he's like, well, I heard. I was like, whoa, information. I was like, I was like, well, you don't know anything yeah. because you heard, yeah. right? Instead of be, instead of being like, well, based on my research and based off of my education, and this idea that Google is literally going to hand you a bullet point list of truth. You have some is guy the there, mo- SEO, being like, okay, is the, is let's the rank most first. With is the most ridiculous and and stupid assessment that you can make. Oh well, if it's it's not in a .gov website, then it must not be true. Right, so this idea that truth is in a singular point or in a singular location is not real. Truth is all over the place, and truth is a compilation of data sets and information that you're going to acquire by spending time intentionally searching for it. And the problem is people are distracted. They're mm. distracted by noise, they're distracted by uh, current events. Dude, anytime stuff happens on social media, first, Let's say it was COVID. Then it was the Ukraine. Then it was Johnny Depp. 
Then it was Kanye. In people's minds, they don't, they're not even thinking about COVID anymore, yeah. bro. They're not even thinking about Johnny Depp. Yeah. They're on to the next motherfucker. They're, they're being like programmed 24 seven and they're being pushed back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Why? Because the most important, most powerful currency in the world is not even attention, it's energy. It's energy. And it's what are you giving your energy to? Are you giving it to some motherfucker out there? Right? Or are you focusing that energy on developing yourself? So, so many people are distracted with garbage, distracted with noise, distracted with poor relationships. And then they look at their life and they're like, what's wrong? You're what's wrong. People want uphill results with downhill habits. True. Very true. Let me go backtrack because this is something that I hear a lot of times, especially like people in the comments, right? They're like, who is they? Who is they that we always talk about? Who is this master agenda, right? Is it the government? Is it the Jews? Is it the people who print the money in America or in the world? Who is they when it comes to, at least when we say they, for you, Luke, you say they a lot, right? They want to control. Yeah. You. So they is more so it's, it's a system, right? It's a system. It's not a single point of contact. You can't blame one, everything on one individual unit. It doesn't work that way. There's 7 billion people in the world with 7 billion agendas. Mm. The problem is a lot of people subscribe to the agendas of other individuals. Therefore, now you have mass hysteria and the group mentality is not a reasonable mentality. Yeah. So the they is a system. And what is the system? The system is to garner and focus your energy, suck your energy away from you so that you can give it to these resources, give it to these agendas and basically make you a slave. What is slavery? Slavery is this idea of not being able to be an autonomous individual that makes their own decisions, whether willingly or unwillingly. It's not a specific entity. It's not a specific person. You know, we can go under conspiracies and start naming a ton of people and all these things, but I've never broken bread with these individuals, but I know that the system is broken. So it's not so much an individual as it is uh, a, an institutional virus per se, that from the moment you're born attacks you. From the moment you're born, you're told what your nationality is, what your, what your religion is, what to think, what to believe, what to wear, uh, who's your enemy, who's your friend, what color is your color, what color is not your color. You're not even yourself. Mm -hmm. So this idea of, of truth and seeking truth and seeking information is for you to start developing who you want to become. And the beauty about the world is that in this matrix that we live in, and we call it matrix uh, to simplify this this idea of spawning with consciousness in a place that we have no idea, like what the fuck's going on. Like, you don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know what the fuck's going on. We're just here trying to figure shit out. Like that's the truth, right? And am I gonna be focusing my attention and giving my attention and my energy to some bullshit drama that's happening on the internet that I know is controlled and I'm gonna give my attention and energy to that? Or am I gonna focus my attention and energy to reprogram and get rid of all the labels and all the bullshit that were assigned to me ever since I've been born and figure out who do I want to become? Not who am I, but who do I want to become? And then work towards that persistent pursuit of the potential that you can achieve as an individual. Let me ask you this. So I think religion plays a big role into that. For sure. Right? I think like for me, I'm born Muslim, obviously. Mm. Right? Arab country, Syria, so on and so forth. I seen Andrew Tate just convert, right? I don't know if that was marketing or not. I hope it's not, obviously. But when I look at religion, I think religion is the only safe haven for people to have specific set of moral, cultural beliefs that always make you realize that whatever you do in this world doesn't really matter in a sense, mm -hmm. right? You're Because you're, you're always putting your energy to the end goal, which is you're going to meet God one way or another, right? You only, you're only in this life, in this matrix for a specific amount of time. So how much, or at least why, one, I feel like you don't talk about religion enough, so why? Two is what are your guys' thoughts on Islam in general or any specific religion, obviously. Mm. Like one thing that's been really big on my mind as well is like this whole idea of Jews, right? Jews is a religion. It's not a race, right? Judaism. Judaism, exactly. And I think a lot of people are starting to get it, like with this whole Kanye thing going on, right? They mm. say you can't be anti-Semitic, for example. So how does religion obviously tie into what we're doing in this world and obviously the, the mission of self-conquer. So religion, in my opinion, the current format of religion is this idea of self-actualization and figuring out uh, for some people who God is, for other people, is it reincarnation? For other people, it's transcend transcending to 
to new planets like the Mormons believe or uh, the Jews believe that a new Messiah is going to come or the Christians believe that a Messiah has already come. Uh, Muslims believe that uh, that the prophet Muhammad uh, was the one that uh, brought, you know, God delivered. Um, he's the last prophet. Uh, he's the last prophet. God delivered the final word to him. Yep. Therefore, that's the final word. You know, there's so many different things. But what we need to look at, and this is where my passion lies, is what do all these wise texts and what do all these wise people uh, that are, whether it's through God or whatever you want to call it, what do they all have in common? What are they all preaching? And what can we pull from all of that? I'll give you one. Every single religion, at least the major ones, and I've studied the Torah, I've studied the Quran, I've studied uh, the Bhagavad Gita, I've studied the Bible. Um, I look at all of these, and one thing overall stands out to me, which is what you sow, you're going to reap. That is consistent throughout all wise texts. So what does that mean? That means that for whatever, whatever things you put out, you're going to receive an equal proportion to that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult conversation because it's a transcendental conversation that people have been having for thousands of years. And that's why instead of, you know, uh, focusing on this idea of, of eternity right now, it's more so figuring out, like, what do I believe? Who am I? And why do I believe what I believe? And... There's so much programming that takes place in all of these things that, you know, I have my religious beliefs, I have my, my train of thought on certain topics, but at the end of the day, my pursuit is the pursuit of truth, mm. right? So, for example, the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you, shall set you free. It's not you will believe the truth, mm. it's you will know the truth. Therefore, it's so deep ingrained inside of you that it just resonates with you at a deep level. So... In my, in my opinion, you know, you have this idea of like, for example, we talk about Kanye, you know, he can say a thing about the Jewish people, that the Jewish run the media, all these things. I don't care, right? I don't care who runs the fucking media. I don't care who runs the bank. I don't care who runs the real estate. What I need to figure out is who am I, right? What does God or uh, this idea of a superior being want from me? And... uh what am I willing to, to do with that information that I've received? Am I going to be obedient to it? Or am I going to continue doing what everybody else is doing? And it's, it's a lifelong journey. You know, it's a journey that at the, in your mid twenties, I don't think you have the full answer to, but as you continue developing yourself, if you're intentional, you're going to find, um, uh, truths that line up with you and truths that may be true that you may not agree with. And it's a, it's a, it's a tough one, G. It's a tough one for sure. Yeah. Nate? So it's very interesting, right? So two things that I find in religion. The funny, before we tap into two things, yeah. the funny thing is people have emotional biases mm -hmm. and fight. And if we're striving to search the truth, we shouldn't be fighting, mm. right? That's the first thing. What What are some positive, because there's, there's, Every coin has two sides. There are good things and there are bad things. Let's three go sides. Things. Three sides. Th and then you have what the you correct, believe. correct, correct. <laughs> <laughs> correct. So one thing I, I, I enjoy about religion <clears throat> is friendships. In this mm. world, we can't go alone. Yeah. I've, I've learned that the hard way. I'm sure you have as well. So when you have people that have certain commonalities, certain belief systems yeah. that align with yes. you, yes. it's yes. a lot easier to bond mm -hmm. and it's a lot easier to Nurture and culture, nurture those relationships. That's one thing. The second thing, Mo, would you agree that this world is very dark? For sure. Perfect. Religion provides a moral compass. Yes. Christianity has its own sets of belief, yep. Muslim, but in this dark world, one needs a moral compass, bro. If not, you'll get lost yeah. and it's dark out there. So I, I I do believe that there is huge benefits. And and I think and I think you know like for example we have I I know that there's like a lot a lot of young listeners and all this stuff, you know we come from a, a specific uh, religious background. We've kind of I've been through I've been through the entire crazy journey. I'll tell it to you another time. And uh, my biggest thing is goes back to the beginning. It's having a student mindset. Facts. It's having the mind of a student that. Like, you don't know shit. Yeah. Like, they, they, we have this idea of there's a universe and things are bigger than you. And the moment that you die, you're just a fart in the wind. Then how are you with such a finite mind 
attributing such infinite wisdom and knowledge to 7 billion people as if you knew the answer, yeah, you yeah, fool. Yeah. So have a student mind in everything that you do in life. And it's like Miyamoto Musashi says uh, in the book of five rings, one of the greatest samurai of all time. He says, think lightly of yourself and deeply of the world. And what does that mean? Is that in the world, you can see this idea of higher purpose, but you have to look for it. But people are distracted. People are yeah. distracted by Bitcoin going up and down, which is totally fine. You got to pay the bills. People are distracted by, by, by this, by that, by this, by that. Why? Because the energy that you're attributing to those things are stealing away your ability to focus and nurture the things that matter. Yeah. And it goes back to what I said. Once you got the bread, now you're left with all the problems that money can't solve. And then you're realizing money ain't shit. I mean, how many billionaires have to commit suicide for people to realize? Yeah. Like we were just at a buddy's house. He, he's a buddy uh, and he, I mean, I think he makes 25 to 30 million net profit a year. Horrible relationship on drugs 24 seven. And I'm there and I'm like, he doesn't got to figure it out. But people from the outside looking in, they'd be like, and damn, it'd be nice to be living in this I crib wish, yeah. with 30 million in the bank every single year. But the dude's like, dude, get me out of this hellhole. Yeah. So all you need is enough money to get out, to focus on yourself full time for the pursuit of truth. And there's nothing more beautiful in life than like Nate said, to band together with people have common goals and to pursue things together, pursue the development of self, not only physical, not only mental, but spiritual and a relational. And I think that there's, uh, there's a lot of truth with that. What I will say, you know, I think that, I think different religions offer a ton of incredible things. So I'll mm -hmm. give you an example. Uh, Islam, for example, to me, Muslims, and I tweeted about it. They are the most hospitable people in the world. I like undebatably, I, I dude, I was homeless and a Muslim dude took me in yep. and he was roommates with a gay guy that he took in himself. Wow. To that point, right? Wow. To that point. So, I'm, so I look at that and I'm like, what is it that this person believes that has changed him to the core to such a point that he's willing to do that? Yeah. Dude, I can mention to you, 95% of Christians wouldn't have taken me in. Mm -hmm. Why? That's the questions you got to answer. Yeah. And that's and those are the things that when you observe the real world, you, you start asking yourself certain things. You know, then you have like, for example, Taoism, which is this idea that uh, everything is energy. So you start viewing money not as paper, but you start viewing it as energy, as a resource to be expendable and to be distributed in order to attribute more energy. So there's a lot of principles that you can pull from different places and it's just like my trading strategy. I've, I've taken a lot of different things and I'm trying to figure out what is, what is the best way for me. And that's, the, that's where I've kind of been struggling myself. And I think it's a struggle that people that are intentional about it are going to have for the rest of their life. And I think it's a good one. Let's take one backtrack real quick, right? So you said you made 100K this month. Some people, that's a lot. Some I made people, a, that's nothing. I, I took a 5K, From 5K to 100K. Yeah, in right? seven months. And that's very hard trades, to believe yeah. to a lot of people, right? I've seen it kind of in person. Here, right? pass, me, the, pass, the me, pass me my phone right there. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're the other proof. One. I'm going to uh, pull up the KuCoin account uh, and I'll show it to you. I actually have a current trade open as well. Um, this is a, uh, this is a, an account that I literally started. And I, for example, opened up a Bitcoin long, a Bitcoin short today, because obviously anytime the market longs, you short because they're, you're liquidity to go the other way. And, uh, and it worked. So let me show it to you as so I took a 100K account. It was at 5K. Uh, right there, you'll see it. You'll see 30K underneath on an open trade, and then you'll see the open PL. You'll see the open PL that says 70K. That means that's the amount of balance in the wallet. And then you have a $30,000 position open on a BTC short with, uh, with three grand in net profit. So that puts my account from 5K to 107K. And the reason I did that was to prove to people that it's not about how much money you have. It's about the information that you have mm -hmm. that allows you to mm -hmm. multiply that money, but not only multiply it back to the idea of Capital Club, but to preserve that money. And yeah, so it's tell a lot us, of money, but it's good. What would you learn in the last 30 days? I learned and that. is this the first time you do this challenge? No, bro. I so do you've this all done the it time. multiple times. Multiple times. But the reason I do it is because I want to prove people that it's possible. Mm -hmm. So what did I learn? One, most people overtrade. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So most people spend too much time in front of the charts instead of spending more time in front of the books mm -hmm. and in front of learning and researching. Dude, I do not want to be the guy like Rambo. <laughs> too much room for failure, too much room for error, too much room for missing the target. 
I want to be the sniper. I yeah. want to be calculated. I want to wait on the tree. I want to make sure the, the, the weather's good. I want to check the humidity. And I just want to fire one bullet. And it's a fucking headshot. That's why we did the same thing, not only with crypto, but with e-commerce. Our winning products, one of every four products that we would launch was a winner. Why? Because we spent so much time learning, so much time doing the research, that when we deployed a strategy, it worked. Back to Miyamoto Musashi, he said, life is about training. And the purpose of training is for you to be able to react without thinking. That it's so ingrained in your nature that people are like, dude, how did you know Bitcoin was going to go up and down? Because I've been looking at the chart every single day for five years. Yeah. And I've been understanding it, learning it, studying, becoming one with it. And these people are like, whoa, that's, that's, that's crazy. You're not using technical analysis? Let me break it down to you, motherfuckers. The top dogs ain't using technical analysis. They only use technical analysis to know what the noobs are doing. <laughs> these guys are out here looking at bigger things. And I'll give you an example. Let me yes. tell you one. I can't say who the billionaire is, but... Uh, there's this really well-known billionaire that what he did was uh, he wanted to open up certain positions with oil, right? He wanted to make some oil trades at a multi-billion dollar level. Do you think this guy got on trading view, did some, <laughs> did some, did some, support did, some, did, some <laughs> did some support <laughs> and resistance to figure out if he was going to buy some crude oil? Yeah. No, he realized that, you know, the containers that you have the crude oil s stored in, the lids would go up and down in accordance to the level mm -hmm. of the oil reserve. So the lid was kind of not a sealed lid. It was a lid that was placed over the top. So what does this dude end up doing? He launches satellites into space. <laughs> Thinking to, outside the box. To wow. measure the level of the lid and therefore know the reserves that are held in oil and make his trades and his positions in accordance to that information. Where are you going to get that, dude? That takes critical thinking. That Only takes fans. experience. That takes knowledge. And you need to be able to put that into play at a micro level so that then you can do it at a macro level. Yeah. So you got to think outside of the box. You can't be thinking how the sheep are thinking. Dude, if everybody's looking at the same technical analysis, everybody's going to do the exact same, same thing. Yeah. And it doesn't work. So you need to be able to use it as a measurement, but it can't be that alone. You need to be able to equip yourself with as many tools as possible. I love that. Let me ask you this. I think the whole red pill movement has a very big correlation with crypto, right? Because mm -hmm. crypto's messaging at its core is decentralization, right? Being against the government in a sense or being not attached to the government, right? The independence idea. Do you think crypto is really going to be that ace to be like the good versus the evil? No. Why not? Because the U.S. government can print a trillion dollars right now and buy all the Bitcoin in the world. Yeah. So this idea that, for example, Fidelity. Fidelity has trillions of dollars of assets under management. Hopefully somebody can look up the logo of Fidelity. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a little Masonic yeah. uh, uh, logo. And they started mining Bitcoin in 2015. Kathy Wood, she was buying, she bought 100 grand worth of Bitcoin at $250. Dude, the big dogs have been in way before you. You think you think you got the information first? You think you landed on a Reddit forum and you're ahead of uh, ahead of all the guys that are actually institutionalizing and making the rules and setting things in stone? You're mistaken. For example, a couple of days ago, we had a new prime minister assigned to the UK. Yeah, Bitcoin. There you go. And now they're launching. They're going to push a CBDC. I was sitting with the head, and hopefully you come out to, to the next mastermind. I was sitting out. We did the Phuket master. We did uh, the mastermind in Albania, and I brought out uh, a, a gentleman by the name of by the last name Fulani, and he's the governor of the Central Bank of Albania. He's the one that signs the money that goes out. I asked him three questions. The first one, I said, "Mr. Fulani, do central banks run the world?" And he said, "Well, I can't answer that, but what I can tell you is what J.P. Morgan said." J.P. Morgan said, whoever controls the money controls the world. One. The second question I asked him was, is Bitcoin money? And he said, well, what are the functions of money? You know, it has to be a value. It has to be a means of exchange. It has to have a store of value, things of this nature. So Bitcoin, by definition, is money. The third question I asked him, because he's a globalist, uh, and I still talk to these people because I'm here to learn. I'm a yeah. student mind. I asked them, you know, World Economic Forum, 2030, all these things. Is it going to happen? He said, undoubtedly, it's going to happen. 
And the reason he knows it's going to happen is because we're going to go back into a state of what's called techno feudalism. I'm not going to go into super in depth details as to what techno feudalism is. We'll talk about it over dinner because it's a little bit of a deeper conversation, mm -hmm. things that I think people need to go and explore. But if you think a bunch of retail Wall Street bet investors are going to go against the system that allowed them to get rich in the first place, yeah. is foolish. These guys control everything and they're going to continue controlling everything because you're not disciplined enough to get your act together to compete. What you think you're going to compete with these guys that are quants that are running hedge funds worth billions of dollars by reading two books a year, by hang, by hanging out with scrubs all day, dude, you're so far behind. They, people can't even comprehend how, how weak they truly are. So my recommendation for people is understand where things are going, understand where the trends are moving and position yourself in a way where you, as part of the system, because you are a part of the system, like you are part of the problem, you're part of the virus, just as much as everybody else is part of the virus. You need to position yourself in a way that you can succeed and you can minimize your risk. So what does this mean? Over the next coming years, there's going to be a couple major uh, sectors that are going to be extremely popular. Sector number one, anything that has to do with green renewable energy, massive yeah. sector. Right? So me understanding this, I'm going to start looking for projects, companies that are going to position myself, right? To make, dude, these guys still have to pull their money out of the, out of the, like out of the markets. They still have to be able to play these games. So what I'm doing is I'm figuring out where are these guys going and how can I take a little nibble? I'm not here to fight. Like I dude, we, we said it before, right? If this idea that you died, nothing matters in this life, then why am I going to be focused all my attention on trying to disrupt the machine? Yeah, dude. Like what sort of yeah, God complex do you have that you yeah. think that you're going to disrupt the machine? You're a cog in the machine. You don't even know. But when you have the humility to recognize you're a cog in the machine, you have to figure out, well, how do I capitalize? And how can I make sure that the people around me don't get fucked? Don't get finessed by the system. Don't get famoosed because so many people are. And if you have the ability to capitalize on that and to do good with the resources that you gain from that, I think that that's a win. I think one thing that's really shined out for crypto is the idea of community. Right? Like we talked about religion. That's earlier. massive, bro. Yeah. And and I think that's like the really the biggest like turning point for crypto people was like the idea of like we belong together because we put our money where our mouth is, right? We all bought into this coin, we all bought into this founder, we all bought into this NFT. So it's like now governments are trying to well, not trying, governments don't have that system within them, right? Mm -hmm. They I think like the 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 thing with the government is like there's a lot of um dissection. And one thing I did notice is minorities are very loud and they've gotten louder with crypto now. Mm. Why do you think that is? I mean, I think, I think the smallest do dog usually barks the loudest yeah. and the people that are focused on doing aren't out here tweeting all day. Mm. The, the oil moguls, the, the guys that are out here doing hundred billion dollar deals with, with countries to, uh, to say, we're going to sell you food supplies and things yeah. like that. They're not out here tweeting. They're out here moving things at a big level. Dude, just look up, Google this, guys. Google the top 100 privately owned companies that you've never heard of. These are companies doing 100, 200, 300 billion dollars of revenue a year. They're not publicly listed. You don't know who the fuck the owners are. These companies have been around for 100, 200, 300 years. They run the fucking game. They run the world. So community is phenomenal. It's great, but it's not enough, right? Like this idea of being surrounded by a community is not, is not good enough. You need to intentionally plant yourself in communities where you're the smallest fish. Mm -hmm. right? Where you can actually excel, where yeah. you're not the guy that's like, oh, got to go back on discord, got to go babysit these motherfuckers. Like that doesn't work. And for the, the, the other side of the coin, for those investors, gamblers that are on the other side of the, 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 the coin or the other side of the table, if you're out here assuming that somebody's going to work day and night to multiply your investment, yeah. and that's what you're gambling on, you're a fucking fool because you have just set your future and destiny on the skill set and the resources of another person. And there's no more dangerous place to be than in the hands of another incompetent person. And 95% of the people that launched NFT projects, crypto projects, they're guys that are just trying to figure it out. They're innovating, but with innovation comes a lot of failure. And if you're going to position yourself in a situation where you're once again, relying on another person, yeah. relying on the system, relying on this community, how are you supposed to get forward? It's impossible to do so. 
So I see, I see people doing the exact same thing that they were doing in web 2.0, they're doing it in web three. Um, so it's like Nate said, people want uphill results. They want to win the uphill battle with downhill, 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 downhill work, work ethic, downhill uh, systems, down, downhill mentality. And it doesn't work that way. I think the issue with uh, crypto community is community facilitates information. Yeah. The wrong information to an individual who listens to it for a very long time can create an echo chamber of pure idiocy in terms of like misinformation. Because yeah. I can be in a group where like, let's talk about the fucking XRP community. Let's talk about dude, XRP, yeah. XRP ain't yeah. going to 589, dude. <laughs> it ain't going to 589. Get over it, dude. I've been in yeah. fucking XRP since 2017. Yeah. That yeah, shit yeah, ain't yeah. moving. That's a perfect, that's Quit a being beautiful a cult. example. Quit being a cold that's motherfucking insane. follower yeah. and be like, well, thank well, you for clarifying I'm a, that. I'm gonna I'm hold my fucking 10,000 XRP tokens because one day, It'll be the currency that is going to be used by the Bank of International Settlements or by the ECB. Dude, I've been down this fucking rabbit, the, the whole rabbit trail. Like, I've been down it. I got famoosed. And then I realized, damn, there's another 8,000 projects that could give me plenty of ROI while the shit still gets settled with the SEC. Oh. So it's this cultish community that, once again, you're relying on the information that's and being fed to you. Yeah. And misinformation. Why? Because people have agendas. Do you not think these motherfuckers want to pull your money? Did you not see Luna? Did yeah. you not see Luna, bro? Do you not fucking learn? Every single bull run, the same bullshit, but with a different cloak every single time. Get woke. Yeah. I concur. <laughs> I was watching... Uh, this XRP shit got me spiced I'm up, heated. bro. Like, I'm it was a you, perfect example. It's the perfect uh, it was, example of getting was, famous and bamboozled. The funny part is I was thinking about it. I just didn't want to bring it up, so I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you, because, yeah. Uh, what was I saying though? Oh, I was watching in preparation, obviously, for the podcast, what you guys were doing in uh, Romania with Tates. I don't yeah. think you guys talked about that experience yet. Have you? Yeah, we haven't. No, we haven't talked about the Tates at all whatsoever. Do you want me to go into it a little bit? Yeah, let's talk about that. And then let's talk about, obviously, the food. Mm. The food and how that affects your brain. I think, uh, obviously, you guys touched on it a little bit, but yeah. go deeper. So, right? well, I'll talk a little bit about um, kind of like our experience in, in Romania. So, I've known Tate for about two years, yeah. right? So, it's not this idea of like... Um, by right, Rumble, writing. I think. Hold on, real quick. <laughs> by Rumble, I think. By the I think the alpha is by Rumble. You can. I. I might be wrong. I'll, obviously, I'll give, not I'll financial some, advice. Some, some, but I really think Tate Rumble and the whole Red Pill movement. You Sneeko. What? The, okay, so I, I think I, you, so you guys I, have I do, a very big agenda. Myself, I do not classify I, myself as Red Pill, and I'll yeah. tell you, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because at the end of the Matrix movie, Neo realizes that he's not the chosen one. Mm. He chose to be the chosen one. Mm. So everybody can choose to be the chosen one. And what red pill, red pill means to one person might not mean red yes. pill to another individual. So I do not want to be classified or grouped up with anybody. I'm an autonomous individual <laughs> trying to figure shit out. I'm friends with different people. I like, I'm friends with everybody. I'm trying to figure shit out. So I go to Romania, you know, I've been helping Tate with certain things that he needed help with and things of this nature. I think it was about March of 2020 when COVID started. Uh, I came across one of like Tate's videos and I drive two hours to go tell Nate, like, bro, this guy, like he's going to blow up when, when everybody gets fed up, this guy's going to blow up. Yeah. If, if Tate was a stock, how many followers did Tate have at the time? Like 80,000 on 80,000 yeah. on Instagram. Um, and I think one of his first podcasts was with, was with, uh, the fresh and fit and that one single girl. Right? I'm not familiar. Right. Like I, I haven't yeah, no. consumed a crazy amount of Tate's yeah. content. So I'm in a situation where I saw this guy, I'm like, okay. Like this guy's saying certain things, whether I agree or disagree with him is irrelevant, but he has a point. Mm -hmm. so I was like, when people get fed up, the pendulum is going to swing, Yeah. right? So the pendulum did swing. And if Tate was a stock, dude, I would have gotten fucking Pumped. rich. <laughs> yes. And I was right. And the reason I was right is because I understood where things were going. So with that being said, I was like, hey, I saw, you know, we've been doing business on certain things, just like I do business with hundreds of people. And uh, I, was on, I was doing my stuff in, in South, uh, uh, Southeast Europe. And I said, Hey, Tay, I'm, I'm, I'm nearby. Uh, and he's like, pull through. So I came by, just hung out, have a, had a good time. And we just literally just talked about what we're talking about now. Yeah. Right. And you want to be in circles and situations and rooms with people that are intelligent, people mm -hmm. that are more intelligent with you, people that know information that you don't know. And another guy that's an absolute killer is, uh, their cousin, their cousin, Luke, mm -hmm. like that guy is a fucking gem. 
And, Smart guy. And one of the yeah. big things that I realized, and this is probably a highlight, whether you're left wing, right wing, whether you believe in this, whether no you wings. don't believe in this, yeah. no wings, uh, chicken wings, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> they have something that's extremely important. They have unity. Yeah. They have they they, they take they take care of each other. So you need to be able to, regardless of the messenger, be able to look at a message and ask yourself, is there anything valuable worth this extracting? Mm -hmm. Pull the meat, leave the bones. Most people are look at something and they're like, oh, this is shit. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not shit. Maybe you are shit. Yeah. Or maybe it's a different opinion. Mm -hmm. You don't have to love what everybody says, but maybe you can pull something that is useful for you. So what am I as a student of life? I want to expose myself in situations, put myself in scenarios, comfortable, uncomfortable, good, and bad, where I can excel. And what I came to realize, and Nate came to realize the same thing, is that these dudes have opinions that we don't agree with. They have opinions that we do agree with. But at the end of the day, I realized that they have something really, really important. This is the biggest highlight. They have each other. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, if, if you, if you, I don't care what side your political side you're on, if you don't have a strong team, yeah. If you can't look at how a bunch of, you know, early we're in a world where everybody early, wants to do it by themselves. Exactly. Because this the, the raps normal. tell them, hey, I exactly. did it by myself from the ground up, right? Exactly. The, I'm the, the news guys, tells guys, them, I'm let me tell you something, self motherfuckers. <laughs> self made doesn't do that exist. Shit. Yeah. You can't you do can't that be shit. Alone. Made. You need a team, you need a unit, and you need a strong team and unit. Just, dude, just like I sat down with the head of the Central Bank of Albania, yeah. I sat down to learn. Do you think I agree with his globalist agenda? No, I don't. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? I'm here to learn, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here to learn. And when you're friends with people and you humble yourself and you put yourself in a situation to learn, you can learn a lot. Yeah. And that's what I came to realize is they're more balanced than a lot of people think. There's things that they do that I don't agree with, but I'm not supposed to agree with everything. Yeah. If you're only hanging out with people that agree with everything that you do and say, you're the wrong then you're never going to grow. Yeah. Nobody's ever challenging you. Nobody's ever pushing you. And I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you one example, right? So for example, uh, I did quite well in the bull run and things like Nature. And I was like, okay, Tristan, uh, should I buy a supercar? And he's like, why not? Yeah. And and we started talking about the pros and cons of having one, yeah. right? Like the brokers would be like, well, it's it's not it's not an R an R Y positive need, investment yeah, when it comes the to appreciation. But asset. then he's like, well, let's talk about all the other verticals where it is valuable. Mm -hmm. And then he started making me realize, and he challenged me to to do something that I didn't want to do because he had a good point. Whether I agree with his worldview on this or on that or on yeah. this. He had a good point about this specific topic. And dude, I've sat with people that I don't agree with fundamentally at their mm -hmm. at, at the core. And and I sit down and I listen. And I think if you if you instill that as a as a, a way of being and as a lifestyle, you can you can learn from everybody. Yeah. So I think Romania is fire. What do you think? It was very interesting because we actually were in Romania before 20 oh, years wow, really? previously. Yes. So it was very beautiful to see the country become something evolve evolve yeah, yeah. basically grow um i genuinely genuinely like the guys um in terms of they have hard work they're smart and they have a team most people spend time talking about the tates and the Tates don't spend time talking, talking about, about them. them yeah. <laughs> of course. Dude, they, they ain't fucking they, worried, yeah, bro. I think, I think it was in this video where I picked this up. He, I think uh, Tristan said it. Small minds talk about people, right? And then he said... Uh, great minds talk about... Average uh, people talk about... Uh, I think uh, current events, events and great minds great talk, talk about, about ideas. ideas. Correct. Yes. I think... I think uh, and that's what we did. Well, we yes. just sat down and talked about ideas. Somebody else said this. What's this actor that did the movie? Um, mm. uh, what's the movie that... Uh, he's like a janitor at Home Depot, but he's actually like a killer and takes over all like the- Matt Russian Damon? No it's, no, it's the black guy, the Russian mafia. That he takes over the Russian mafia, the black guy. He's super famous. Oh, Denzel Washington? Denzel Washington. Oh, Denzel. I think Denzel, that's Denzel's quote. Denzel's got some fire quotes. Yeah, he's exactly. a smart Well, long story short, dude, we spent two and a half months in Europe meeting with entrepreneurs from all over the world. And what I came to realize is that these guys, just like Khabib says, and just like they say is, Train Allah, train Allah, train Allah, yeah. train Allah. They're in a situation where they don't give a fuck, dude. They're just yeah. working. So and and so many people don't don't attribute. They're like, oh yeah, yeah. well you just got lucky. You're a four time kickboxing world champion, All right. dude. It takes work. Of course, it takes work. What do you think? You're just gonna be driving a Bugatti because you're out here selling the course. Gee, it takes so much more than that. Yeah. So take what you want, 
and leave what you don't want. But just because you don't agree with the messenger doesn't mean the message is not true. You're going to say something? And I think it boils down to what he said. Yeah. So now let's talk about health. We mm. did talk about that. That was a we big did. one. We did talk health. a lot yeah. with them about health. Yeah. So I yeah. want I want to challenge a lot of the crypto guys because I know we have like a big crypto community, a big crypto audience. You guys, you guys, if you guys want to level up your trading game, you, your investment game, your your finance game, you need to be optimized. Like we talked about the CPU. You need to be optimized because everything around you is designed to keep you keep you back, to hold you back, to hold you down. Oh yeah, but it tastes good. It doesn't matter if it tastes good. Yeah. Dude, there's so many things that are not good for you that taste good, that feel good, that that are nice. But when the bill comes, you got to fucking pay the dues. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is it worth it? And a lot of times it's not. I'll be I'll give you an honest example that I've never talked about. Earlier this year, I went on like a uh I was smoking cannabis too much, more than I should have. And in one month I lost 3.6 million dollars. Right. So I lost three point six million dollars and I've never shared this. And it wasn't because, oh, I wasn't trading good. No, it's because I wasn't prioritizing. and I wasn't doing the right things that I should have. Therefore, life smacked me in the mouth, not the market, not all. Oh, oh, I got exit. I got scammed or I blamed mm -hmm. other people. No, is I didn't have the self-regulation right to put away the things that I need to put away at the right time. And it cost me. And people don't realize that their habits have an impact on everything that they do. Yeah. Dude, if you were healthy, you had a good routine, you had a good habit, uh, you had good friends, you had a good circle of influence, you would be crushing crypto, NFTs, Web3 at a bigger level because you're being challenged 24 seven. So like, for example, we live together and stuff like that. And Nate's, as you know, super shredded. Yeah. So now we're all in the process of, of that's our goal, right? Like that is the standard. You know, I'm the richest guy that's come out of my family since like the last 100, 200 years. I'm challenging my family now. Okay, money is actually important. Mm -hmm. Now we have our younger brother. Uh, he's like ultra into philosophy, reading, nice. all these stuff. So now he manages that quadrant of like mental development. So now he's like sending me all these videos and all wow. this stuff and all this education and all these books because we're piecing each other together. Yeah. We just happen to be in a situation that's extremely nice, Mo, where uh, you can trust your family, right? Yeah. And I, I know it's not common, but if, if it's, if you can't have that from the moment you're born, you have to go assemble that. Just yeah. like the fucking Peaky Blinders. Some of them were family, some of them were cousins, but then you got to band up your army. Mm -hmm. And if you want to bring top tier talent, top tier people in your circle, you have to become a top tier individual. If you can't attract high quality people, the problem ain't out there. The problem is you. You have to become a certain type of individual and you're going to attract the people that deserve to be attracted to you. It's like Jordan Peter says. Bars. What? Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson says the same thing about men. If yeah. all, if if there's a if there's a boy, yeah, not a man, a boy, and all the women don't want to date him or run from him, the problem ain't the women, dude. Mm -hmm. It's you. Same thing, but with your friends. Because what women and men are humans, bro. It's just what we're trying to get out of the relationship is different. But it's just it, like one thing plays out in different things. So yeah. Let me ask you this. Why did you delete all your videos off YouTube? Because people don't deserve certain information. And that's the truth. Uh, people have gotten too comfortable that somehow you're supposed to have videos that are free to the community. Dude, I'm fucking retired. I don't need to be doing shit. Yeah. The reason I post videos and I do live streams or I post certain content is for the people that are willing to tune in and go out of their way and become uncomfortable. This idea of social media, right? allowing an eternal library of your content that people can just pull from and extract value from 24 seven. What do I get in return for your view? Yeah. Like what, what do I get from, from telling you how to, how to make $10 million? I don't get shit. I'm just doing it cause I'm bored. I think it's dope. And I realized that a lot of the information that I put out, people resell my videos, 200, 300, 400, 500 <laughs> no, videos. Yeah. People resell my stuff yeah. because it's valuable. So why would I keep it on there for free when I realize people don't appreciate it? So if you don't appreciate it, you don't show up. That's totally your fault. But I, right now, for example, I think the we I think we just crossed like like almost forty thousand subs on my YouTube channel. I have two videos. Yeah, I know. So it's about the substance and the quality of what you put out that people resonate with. I'm about to change the entire game of how YouTube landscape works because the meta is changing. How how content distribution dissemination works uh, is changed. I'm so sick and tired. Sick and tired, bro. I'm not in the business of building an audience. Yeah. I'm in the business of building a community. 
Mm-hmm. Right? I don't need a fucking million people. Yeah. Give me 300. Give me 300 killers. That's all I need. Mm-hmm. Dude, I don't need. Look at Leonidas, dude. Yeah. He had the 300 baddest motherfuckers. Bro. The yeah. baddest. Sure, he got defeated. But the point stands that the dude knew how to conquer. The dude mm-hmm. was a king. The dude was a G. And he only had 300 people around him. You don't need a million people praising you, worshiping you, uh, following you. Dude, I know people with two, three, four, five million dollars that are broke. They're from two, three, four, five million followers that are broke. They can't make a dime. Mm -hmm. Because just because you're out here making viral TikToks doesn't mean you're an influencer. It just means you're a joker. You're a clown. You're a piece of entertainment. I'm not here to entertain people. I'm here to build a fucking army. And that's the business I'm in right now. So if people want the information, so be it. And and they'll show up for it. If not... Too bad, motherfuckers, you lost. And if not, so be it. Yeah, I, like so it doesn't good. bother me. Yeah. It and doesn't what, bother me. And I think that that's the, the, va- the value of what I'm doing that a lot of people aren't doing is I'm in this game for the next fucking 50 years, G. Yeah. Like, dude, I don't need a Discord. <laughs> that shit. When's the Capital Club Discord launch? And shut up, bro. Don't put me, don't box me up in the Discords. Yeah. Don't box me up in the Discords. Well, I'm in the next? business. What's next for Capital? Like, what's the plan? Yeah, so right now we have, for example, we have our Phuket Mastermind uh, that's coming in the middle of uh, December. Uh, that's only for like the super top, top people. But my main focus right now is like I said in the beginning, Capital Club is Capital Club is merely a representation and extension of who we are as individuals. Yeah. I'm not in the business of competing. I'm in the business of creating. Yep. So as a business of creating, I'm creating myself and I want my life to inspire. And it just happens to be through a symbol and through the mold and through the club of Capital Club. Mm-hmm. So when people come into the club and they become members of the club, it's it's under the it's under the the mindset that you're not here to just extract value. You're here to build yourself. You're here to provide value. You're here to build a community. Imagine an eternal uh, an eternal pre NFT launch hype and build up forever. Yeah, that's what I'm into. I ain't for the fucking coin. I'm in it to build and change uh, the way people operate, and it starts with self. So Capital Club is merely a representation of us, and that's that's what it is. Oh, yeah. Should we keep going? 100% we should keep going. <laughs> Wait, little questions, bro. Let me let me ask you this. Jordan Peterson or Andrew Tate? Uh, neither. Uh, Luke Belmar. <laughs> Not just kidding. Uh, no, what I would say is I like Jordan, um, but I look at I look at people's the outcome of people's lives. Yeah. Right? So I, the first thing I ask myself is what type of life do I want to live? Mm-hmm. And what I've come to realize is that so many people have different things in their life that I that I want to exemplify. It's not a single unit or a yeah. single person. Dude, I the only person that I worship is God. I ain't worshiping. He is the top G. Yeah. Facts. Right? Facts. So I'm in the business of having a relationship and worshiping him. So every piece of information, a person that I interact with, like I said before, I'm here to give value and I'm here to learn. So I'm piecing it from everybody. It's not, oh, I worship Andrew Tate. I worship Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, Cardi B, Lady (laughs) Gaga. It doesn't matter the name that you want to add to it. I'm in the business right now of providing value. And in return, Mm -hmm. uh, people will provide value to me. And yeah, I'm not a fan of anybody, bro. I'm not a fan of anybody. I'm just a fan of the, of the G.O.D. And like, like Khabib, you know, I, I, Khabib, and his team, I th- bro. Let's talk yeah. about that one. Yeah. Sick let's talk team, about bro. that one. Yeah. They have a sick team, undefeated, bro. bro. Powerhouse, sick Powerhouse. team, sick team. So when I look at that dude, the dude's probably worth nine figures, undefeated, and he goes and he wins and he does this. He goes, God, um, I'm learning. Yeah. Like that tells you something. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm into, bro. And yeah, I don't worship anybody. I don't. I don't consider anybody an idol. To me, they're all mortal men that have good qualities and poor qualities. And so am I. So I take what I need and I leave what I don't. What do we think about this recession? Amazon, we're not going into re- we're $13 not, billion. Perfect, dollars let's talk today. about that. Uh, we, we, we're not going into recession. We're going to depression. Let's break this shit down. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Let's break it down, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to go hard. All right. Perfect. Let's talk about what is money. Okay. So first of all, a lot of people want to chase money. They don't even know what money is. Ask yourself, what is money? We're not going to even go into defining what is money because that's your homework. So a lot of you guys are out here chasing money, asking for like to make more money, but you don't even know the essence of money. Therefore, you don't have it. Mm -hmm. You don't even understand what you want and you're chasing it. People work 40, 50 years of their life for something that they don't even know how to define. They don't even know how to define it. 
So first of all, we need to talk about, okay, recession, depression, why is it taking place? Printing of money. That's the big one. Of course. Okay. The extraction of that money. And ultimately is the fact that, dude, people got to get back to work. Yeah. Distribution to the wrong hands. Dude, you ain't going to make, dude, this idea of everybody trading on Robin Hood and getting their own MetaMask and buying 400, it's not real. Yeah. It's not real. The people at the top need to break the system yep. in order to get people back to work because that's the only way the system is going to continue operating. Once again, go study techno feudalism, this idea of feudal lords. So, what are feudal lords? Feudal lords are people that own the means of production, they own the land, they own the armies, they own the most amount of treasury, and they were privately held individuals. They were privately held monarchies or institutions. They had no governing law. They didn't have no constitution. No. They basically went to the peasants because that's what they were. A peasant, by definition, is a common person, right? So most of you guys, by definition, are peasants. Like, that's just the nature of what it is. I would even consider myself a peasant when I'm comparing myself to people that are running the world. What, I, what, you, what you realize and you come to learn about feudalism is what's going to be taking place, and I'm predicting this as I've predicted DeFi, as i predicted crypto, as i predicted Andrew Tate, I know where the trends are going, and the trends are going by the year 2030. We're 2030, 2032, 2033. Did you see what happened past uh, right now? They have like a preemptive passing that all European countries have to have electric cars by the year 2032. I did see that, yeah. So how are you positioning yourself? What, are you going to go and comment? You're going to even go and comment on the news tweet and be like, fuck this shit, fuck car, car swabs and uh, the world economic. They're trying to shut us off. Figure out how you can win. Yeah. Now, what are you, you going to fight these dudes, dude? No, they're already going to take over, learn it, get used to it. Oh, well, Luke already gave up. Luke, okay, perfect. You don't have to give up. Do whatever the fuck you want. I know that I'm in a situation where I can't. Dude, it's like trying to fight somebody that has a, an army that runs the world with a fucking squirt gun. Yeah, it's like I look at life like it's impossible. This, right? Like a lot of people think it's like, oh, because the system's corrupt, that means you're never going to win. Mm -hmm. I think the question they need to be asking themselves is like, how can I – be on the corrupted side where I can participate in the corruption and be on the winning side. But I wouldn't right? even but call I wouldn't even call it yeah, I, think I wouldn't, like I, I wouldn't even call it corruption because what it is But is, it is corruption though. But is it because here's the thing. Because it's cheating. Right? But is it cheating to some extent. But is it cheating on what? The rules that are made by who? True. Exactly. True. Yeah. So you are under a construct of rules that you didn't agree to. Correct. You didn't agree to play the yeah. game. So if you don't want to play the game and you want to famoose the game what is that corrupt? Why? Because you can't do it. Yeah. Do you think billionaires are already paying tax, motherfucker? They ain't paying shit. Yeah. They ain't paying shit. And you're taking your 40% like a nice little peasant. Whoop you in the ass. Bring the IRS. <laughs> Dude, that's how they run you. Yeah. And you think that these guys are running off of the same rules and rule sets that you are? No. Because they make the rules, they set the rules, and they play by the rules. You know why they play by the rules? Because they're the ones that make them. When was the last time, bro, let me ask the audience. Yeah. When was the last time you read the entire tax code of the United States? Let me pay, let me pay my taxes this Turbo way. Tax, HR block. You don't because you don't give a fuck. These guys hire the best people. They get educated. They go to the best schools and they position themselves in a way where, in a way where they can capitalize. So this idea of corruption, I'm not out here talking about the mob that's capping people when, yeah. when yeah. they don't pay. Yeah. That's a, we, we need to be able to define what corruption is. Yeah. So this idea of people uh, gaming the system is different than people playing by the rules that yeah. they have set. Yeah. So I want to play by the rules that I want to set. So I need to position myself in an environment where I know the rules and I know how to conquer. And that's it. So people over, over complicated. They talk about conspiracies and all this stuff. And I can go down deep the rabbit hole, more conspiracies that you can even think or imagine or fathom, but they can, they're not going to get me paid. Yeah. They're not going to take care of my family. Do you think I give a fuck whether the world is the, the shape of a Dorito, whether, whether NASA it, it faked the moon landing, whether this, whether that, all, I don't give a fuck. I don't, it doesn't matter. It's not going to impact my life. It's not going to change it. But so many people are so hyper-focused on what other people are doing that they're not doing anything. Let me ask you guys this, both of you. Mm. Do you think you can get rich without making a positive impact on other people's 100%, lives? 100%. For sure. Obviously. Look at scammers. Look at Do Kwan. <laughs> yeah. You can, because money money's just nothing. Okay, but hold on. When you say look at Do Kwan, Do Kwan made a lot of people rich and then that happened. Doesn't right? matter. Scammers. So what is same it? thing? It's perfect. So what they're feeding their family or they're making a positive impact on somebody's life. 
to okay, get rich. Okay, so okay, so let's talk right? about this. So, so you break know, that down. Okay, let's break it down. This is a great. This is a great question. So let's talk about the vegans, right? For example, <laughs> so vegans are like, okay, perfect. Uh, let's choose the 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 greatest of uh, of or the least of two evils. Right. Yep. So okay, we'll sacrifice the ant to save the cow. Right, okay. but what is the difference? There isn't a difference. You just have a preference as to what you. Of could, who do you want to kill? Correct. Correct. I'll have all the vegans, guys. I was a vegan for two years. Relax. All right. <laughs> yeah. I tried. Um, I tried my best. Uh, and I think if you want to live that lifestyle, it's perfectly fine. That's up to you. Anyways, the point being is you have this idea where people look at things in a binary way. They don't. They don't think outside of the box. They don't think it's it's gray. They don't think it potentially has multiple angles or multiple points of view or multiple verticals. It's either this or this, right? It's either this is the greater evil and this is the lesser evil and I'm going to choose this. So my perspective when it comes to how I strategize and how I execute isn't, oh, what's the greatest, e like what's the greatest good that I can cause with the minimum amount of evil? What I want to do, and this is something I was texting my brother about, is to understand the source and the energy attached to that money. Yeah. So do you want haram? Do you want money that is cursed, that follows mm -hmm. you around? Because that money comes with an energy. Exactly. That money sure. comes with an energy. For it comes sure. attached with something. Sure. So it doesn't come with no, with no strings attached. Money mm. comes with strings attached. Mm. So the question is, perfect. Does everybody know that or everybody believe, oh, wow, you're so successful? The question is, when you look at yourself in the mirror every single morning, are you actually successful? Like you look at yourself like, Nah, you finessed, you scammed, you finessed people. Um, you you have to deal with that. Doesn't matter if you have a hundred million dollars. Dude, I know people worth hundreds of millions of dollars that can't sleep can't at night sleep for the night. bullshit that they've done. Yeah, of course. Do you think that's worth it? Let me sleep in peace. Peace and of I, mind is greater than that, any wealth. That's why I say that, that's why I say you have to make a positive impact one way or another in order to get rich. Like you can you can disagree, but look in at In order you. to get wealth. Well, you're a perfect example, bro. Yeah. Like you're making a positive impact first. You're getting rich by doing that. Mm. It doesn't have to be direct, but it's true. Every successful person, like you say, they don't pay taxes. Well, bro, they're fucking feeding billions of people, millions of people. True. Right? So I really believe like a lot of people don't understand that. I think- And well, they want to do the shortcut. They want to do the scamming. They want to do the quick thing. They want to, because again, like you think about traders, right? Everyone wants to be a trader. Why? Because they think it's so easy. It's just me and the computer and the numbers in my head, right? But you can't do that. Like you might get lucky once, twice, three times. It's going to wear out. I want to go back to the point of like the idea of money being cursed because yeah. people don't understand it. Um, like Taoism talks about money as energy or Chinese actually believe money is literally just energy. So what is the energy that's attached to that money? Like what is that? What is, what is it that you're causing in order to receive that money? You're causing a lot of pain, a lot of harm, a lot of troubles, mm -hmm. all these things. There's other ways where you could make more money and probably it'll take you a longer period of time while causing a positive impact or providing massive value. Elon Musk said it best, right? You get paid in proportion to the difficulty right. of the problems that you solve. Yep. You solve big problems, you get paid big bucks. Yep. Solve little problems, you get paid little bucks. This idea that money makes you successful is bullshit, Fast. right? Success breeds money. Yep. Success yields money. Just because you have money doesn't mean you're successful. And we're in Miami, right? This is crypto scam capital Front town. of the world yeah. Front town. this in dubai right it we got of it, all bro. Yeah. walking miami just feel i'm starting to hate it i'm starting to hate it honestly i've been living here for two years i'm starting to hate we it. got we, and you gotta in in the, these guys think okay i finesse i live in a in a penthouse these things nobody yeah. gives a fuck bro what you've done or what you you haven't done will play out in the long term and how I view it is I want to make sure that I view myself as successful. Yeah. I don't care what people think about me. So when I look at myself and I'm like, you know what? You're legit. When I can tell that to myself, that to me is what makes my dollars count. When I look at it, I'm like, okay, you actually, like, you know, deep down, like you earn that coin. Yeah. And I uh, highly advise people to be careful uh, the type of money that they go after. Yeah. There's multiple avenues that you can get rich. But if you want to get rich quick, um, it often comes with a price tag. And I would recommend that you be careful. So that comes with a lot of problems and a lot of difficulties. You can talk about haram, karma, bad karma, good oh. karma, good energy, bad energy. And it's true. Wise men have been talking about it for thousands of years. And if you think it's not going to come back and you're going to have to pay the bill for your actions, you'll have to pay for it either in this life or the next. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let me ask you this. What's one thing you did not like or, or you anticipated 
meeting Andrew Tate and it didn't happen. I don't want to talk about Andrew Tate. I love Andrew Tate. Let's talk about another question. <laughs> is, this, is this a full? Is this I, a full I, thing, or are we clipping it? Uh, it's gonna be both. Okay. Wait, yeah. I love you, Andrew, but let's talk about let's talk about uh <laughs> let's talk about seed phrase. Seed phrase. Bring me some crypto questions, bro. Crypto questions. Well, where okay. are we going? Ten k or twenty four? What's first? <laughs> okay, so so I think um, right now we're seeing a little bit of a relief bounce, um, but eventually I think we're gonna go down. After midterms. Yes. So midterms, usually things do extremely well. Yeah. Not often, uh, not every single time, but they do well uh, in mm -hmm. the short term. But I think we're going into depression. Why? Because supply chain is shocked. Um, yeah. People have no money. The banks, central banks, are requesting the loans that they loaned out back. Uh, there's a massive civil war, this idea of civil war between left, right, that's taking place in the world. Yeah. We have a war that's taking place overseas right now. We have a food shock, right, in the Ukraine that's taking place. And it can become uh, a bad situation in the long term. Now, how do you position yourself to succeed? The way you position yourself to succeed is by uh, selecting a few sizable bets mm -hmm. that you want to make and study those specific sizable bets. I'll give you my two big sizable bets for the next two, three years. One, Shopify. Shopify, I think, will directly compete uh, in some way, shape, or form with Amazon. Amazon is a little bit different, but I think Shopify appeals to uh, the people that are small entrepreneurs, right? So I think we're at a $25 or $30 billion market cap, don't quote me specifically, guys, uh, mm -hmm. for Shopify. And then we're sitting at a over a trillion or close to a trillion market cap for Amazon. I think Shopify has the ability to 10x. So I'm putting 10% of my net worth in Shopify. The second one right now that I think is underpriced and it's on purpose is Meta, right? I think Meta, dude, these guys are fucking wizards. Who else is going to compete with them? TikTok, TikTok, Twitter. They're the only ones around. The cats own Instagram. I think they Apple's own... their biggest threat, though. I don't see Apple, Mark Zuckerberg. Apple's I, I respect Apple's everything Mark Zuckerberg threat. has done, but I don't think he's an innovator. That's the thing. He, at his, at he his doesn't core, have to be. He's a developer. He doesn't have to be. That's why he has a team. Here's yeah. the thing, they're sitting, on, they're sitting on tens of billions of dollars cash, perfect. Now iOS says, okay, we're gonna take this tracking off. Or, you know, you want to run boosted posts on your stuff, you have to run it through our app store. Sure, these are revenue hits that, are, that impact, but they impact the stock price. Do they impact the overall health of the company? These are two different things. Yeah. You need to look at the health of the company and the stock price, and you'd be, be able to correlate it. I think Facebook, Facebook is, is at the prices of 2015. Yeah. 2015 yeah. it's it worth like more than that right now or like it's that. worth more than that yeah. so once again my two big sizable bets in the web 2 space are going to be shopify and meta why because i understand them and like i said before i'm not just in the business of betting on companies i'm in the business of betting on winners so if there's this dude with a do you think mark zuckerberg is just gonna fold dude I think i'm he's in just the, gotten too big where it's like you have to bring him down like the government's just like yo He's not, part of the government. And now he's getting bro. into the hardware game. He's part of he's the government. He's getting into the hardware game. That's the, the, dude, the dude is ahead of the curve. He's a genius. Do I like him? Is he a globalist? 100%. Yeah. I'm still going to get rich off of his stuff. I'm still. I'm betting on winners. I prefer putting my money on Mark Zuckerberg than putting my money on some bullshit Web3 project developed by 19-year-olds. Come That's rocket. the truth. <laughs> if you could put your money on Come Rocket or Mill for some garbage-ass shit, and make money. so be yeah. it. I'm going to put it long term because right now I'm not in the business of multiplying my wealth. I'm in the business of preserving, preserving it because yeah. I have enough, right? I don't have to work another day in my life. So I want to preserve what I have and I want few sizable bets that I can sleep well at night that aren't going to tank overnight. So literally today or like 89 or whatever it was, I started opening up my positions and I'm literally going to uh, layer in all my trades up until I think $76 and over the next five years. It'll multiply three, four, five, six X, and so be it. So you put a couple million dollars in there, three, four, five million dollars, you end up with twenty. It's not that it's not that difficult. But if you think, and I and I called it on my Twitter account at Luke Belmar last week, I said buy Shopify. Yeah, Shopify's up pump today. Thirty eight percent. Why? Good because earnings. I knew that their earnings were going to be great. Yeah. So if you can come to me, and I've been in the e commerce space, and you don't think motherfuckers in Q four are going to spend ad revenue. Of course. On Facebook, of course, Black right? Friday, Cyber You're Monday, crazy. Christmas. They're about to drop the bag, whether they like it or not, yeah. because they want to get those Q4 sales. So Facebook, Meta, they're going to do extremely well this next quarter. And if they don't do it, 
the speculation or the rumor is gonna drive the stock up and then you cash out. The point is you have to get in early and you have to be able to position yourself accordingly. So that's my, those, those are my thoughts, bro. What do you think? And don't invest unless you have a lot of money, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, no, well, correct. And investing correct, correct, is correct. like next level game. Correct, correct. There's investing, there's trading, there's gambling, there's a lot of different verticals, right? Yeah. I'm in the business right now of investing. investing. So yeah. I did my trading, I trade for fun, I trade to have case studies and things of this nature. But a lot of you cats right now, you gotta be making cash. Cash flow. You gotta be making money. And the reason you wanna be making money is because as we talked about, you get paid in proportion to the difficulty of the problems that you solve and the value that you provide in, in this in, in the world. You want to be right now in the business of developing valuable skills because you'll get paid in accordance to that. So if you have no money, right, and you have no influx of money, you have to ask yourself, what value am I providing? And if the answer is not much, right, then your job is to start providing value. You take that, then you can multiply it in, mm. in, in the crypto market, you can multiply it in the stock market, and then ultimately you'll get into a position like myself where you're just about preserve preserving it and you know a lot of a lot of super super ultra wealthy wealthy people i speak to they're like bro i don't like i don't need more money i just need to keep what i got like i'm no. in the business of just keeping my stuff and that's the position that i'm taking it's a little bit different than you know the people that are like the average people of our age that like their investment strategy and things of this nature but if you think that the level of knowledge that you currently have is going to make you a billionaire you're sadly mistaken you got to level up your mind, got to level up your information, got to level up your circle, because that is what's going to lead you to become extremely successful. And it's like Jim Rohn says, if you have a million dollars, you best become a millionaire, yeah. because if not, you're going to lose it. So it's about becoming that which you want to be. And if you want to become a billionaire, then embody the habits, the beliefs, the systems, the methodology, the actions, the habits, the behaviors, the, the friendships, the relationships, and the knowledge pool that billionaires mm. have. And Hopefully, some of that success trickles down to you because success leaves clues. Boom. I think that was fire. Wait, wrap it up. Yeah. Let's wrap Capital it up. Club, fuck it. Drop the link. Capital Club, ladies and gentlemen, on Instagram, at Luke Belmar. At Mr. Belmar. And Seed uh, Daily. This Drop a like. Seed Phrase Daily. Share I, I'm the looking fuck forward, out of this. I'm looking forward to the, to the success of the show over the long haul. I think you doing this bear market is a, is a really good positioning play for when the bull market comes because – uh, I think we have one more bull run in, and I think that Seed Phrase has the potential to, you as a host specifically, you're a really good host with really good questions. I think Seed Phrase has the potential to to cause some disruption. I'll say this. Morning Brew sold for $75 million end of 2020 mm -hmm. because they were a newsletter business first, and now they're a media company. Mm -hmm. Seed Phrase is a media company first with a newsletter in a space that's very new, very innovative, and very few competitors. Very few competitors. I'll say in two, probably three to four years max, Seed Phrase probably $50 million. Easily. I don't doubt That's it. That's on camera. And the reason I don't doubt it is because it's not about seed phrase. It's about the host. It's about the people that run it. Boom. We'll end it right there. Drop a like, comment, share the fuck out of this. Hey, hey, we'll see you guys. you guys on the next week.